And this one is a deck builder where players are going to be starting out the game, each with a commander card, and you're going to be putting this out in front of you, and that's going to be giving you some sort of permanent bonus for the rest of the game. You only ever get one of these throughout the entirety of the game, but there are some other cards known as title cards that you can purchase throughout the game and can be put out in front of you in just the same way. Players begin the game with the same set of starter cards, but you will be able to buy more cards and manipulate your deck as the game goes on. But your cards are mostly going to be doing one of two things. They're going to be either giving you some buying power or they're going to be giving you some fighting power. Some cards can do a combination of both or have some other effects like providing upgrades to other cards that you might have in play. The game kind of plays in two phases where your first goal of the game is to try and capture three location cards and there's going to be three put out at the start of the game but then more are going to be added as the game goes on but then once a player is able to capture three different locations then it's going to trigger a final battle and then players are going to be gaining cards based on the locations that they were able to capture that's going to be giving you more power for that final battle so capturing the different locations doesn't guarantee you the win but it does put you in a better position because it's going to give you more cards to choose from. But in this game, players are going to be alternating turns back and forth. And on a player's turn, they're going to be drawing three cards into their hand from their draw deck. And then they have the option to either play some other cards or to host a challenge. If you decide to play some of your cards, you're going to be playing them into your area in front of you out on the table. But one thing to note here is that there is two types of cards. There's the angel cards and the demon cards. And they do work very similar to each other, except it's the angel cards that are going to be used in order to attack the different locations and try to claim them as your own and then it's the demon cards that are going to be trying to prevent that for your opponent the main market's going to be repopulated from these two decks but it's up to you to decide which decks you want to draw from to repopulate the market when you go ahead and buy cards any of the cards that you use for their spending power are going to be going into your discard pile but then all the other cards are going to be remaining in play in front of you but you will be separating your angel cards from your demon cards and there are some additional rules with how the demon cards play because you can only have certain cards out at the same time. But like I said, you don't have to play cards on your turn. The other option is to host a challenge. And whenever you do that, you're going to be declaring one of the locations out on the board. And then you're going to be trying to capture it by issuing angel cards from your play area towards that location, trying to end up with a strength higher than the strength of that location. You do have to be careful here, though, because each location is going to have specific rule changes that could change the fundamentals of play and might make some of your cards more powerful or ineffective, depending on what those rules say. But this is when the demon cards also come into play because if your opponent has any demon cards in their play area then they can choose to issue those towards the location as well and those will essentially be having some negative effects on your angel cards maybe getting rid of some of them or also changing some of the ways that those cards might play and that might end up with you having a lower overall strength than the location that you're trying to take over and in that case you would not win the location and your turn would be over. And the game continues like this until one of the players captures three locations and then that's going to trigger the final battle. And the way that that works is that each player is going to be looking at the location cards that they've captured and each of those is going to give that player options for adding cards into a new hand. Once players have created their hand, they're going to be comparing them to see who has the highest strength and then that player wins the game. A really interesting end game here because it's not necessarily the player with the most locations that's going to win the game but it does tip the odds in their favor. But if this one sounds interesting to you, you can find links in the description below. And of course you can click to get notified once this campaign launches.